third baseman Jackson Olson is really a true baseball renaissance man. Uh, you seem to be living the dream, my friend, as we welcome you in. Uh, for those that don't know you, just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your journey. Yeah, so as you said, I played college baseball. Um, that was my dream was to play Major League Baseball, and that's what I wanted to do my entire life since I was four years old, since I could hold a bat in my hands. Um, and I realized pretty quickly that that dream, because of COVID and because of other things that were happening, might not happen. And I realized, okay, so if that dream of playing Major League Baseball isn't going to happen, how can I stay in the game? How can I find a way to stay in this game, whether it's making content for who knows who knows what, um, or just staying in the game anyway. So MLB reached out to me after my very last college game at Stetson, and they were like, do you want to be in our first creator class? And I was like, I had no idea what that meant. And uh, long story short, I started making a bunch of videos, like a lot of videos every single day, and I was getting obsessed with it. And um, then I got the opportunity to go to every major league stadium this year, or 20 of them. And yeah, so college baseball player turned TikToker turned <laughs> baseball player again. <laughs> Full circle, my friend. That's cool. Jackson, what's up, bro? Uh, I think we're gonna zoom in on the shirt, the special edition shirt. We gotta get you one. Shout out to Roosevelt's and the Savannah Bananas. Uh, nice. My question for you is about your TikTok. I just followed you, checked you out. You got plenty of viral videos, but you really blew up when you had the walk-off celebration with the bananas. Uh, you faked an injury, <laughs> you come across home plate, and next thing you know, everybody gets around and uh, wait for it, wait for it. Twerk team. Get it, get it. Get Was it, this get rehearsed, it, get it. practice, prepared? <laughs> All right, so funny story about this. So we obviously prepare everything for the bananas. We go through entertainment meetings before the game, two days before the game, three days before the game, and we're always like ready for different things coming our way. But because we have so much we have to do during the game, there there's a, there's so much going on in your head that you forget things. So Eric Burns, who is the head one of the head coaches, he wears these massive Mickey gloves. And as I was rounding third base, he starts slamming his leg. He's like hitting his leg as hard as he can. And I'm like, why is he hitting his leg? What's going on? And I realized I had to do the run celebration because it was the third run of the game. So I'm like, oh my gosh, wait. So I need to fake a hammy injury and then do the dance. And uh, that was my first taste of being a Savannah Banana. So. Wow, oh you played God. it perfectly. That was awesome, man. <laughs> I got to know um, a little bit more about the, the walk-ups, because we know Savannah Bananas walk-ups are, are crazy, and this is one of your more popular ones right here that we see, uh, The Greatest Showman. You got to tell us a little bit about this and you know how you got this going, because this is something that has started a long time ago for you. Yeah, so I started making Greatest Showman videos like when I started doing TikToks. Um, that was one of the one of the reasons why some of my teammates were like, "Who is this kid? And what is why is he doing this weird <laughs> stuff? Like, you're a baseball player, you're not a showman." And um, it is really crazy how it comes full circle, where it's like now my job is to be a baseball player and a showman. So was making the videos for a little while and I never thought it would get to the point where I'm literally walking up to the plate and doing a dance before an at bat from the greatest showman and it just everything is so everything seems so like it feels like a movie right now it doesn't feel like I'm actually doing all of this it feels like it's just scripted even though it's not speaking of entrances Jackson you had your first game with the bananas and walk us through not just that first game this video also that we're about to show on the screen <laughs> Yeah, so this is our, our player entrances, which we did three or four times before the games. Uh, this is actually after like a two-hour rain delay. So we had a two-hour rain delay, and we ended up still playing because the show always goes on, uh, no matter what in Banana Land. And yeah, my, my brother actually recorded this video. He was sitting right behind me. He had no oh. idea that I was there. And I turn around, and I go, hey. And he's like, he was like confused. He's like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be playing in two minutes. What are you doing up here? And why are you wearing and one basketball pants? <laughs> and, and then obviously that happened and it was, it's, it's a magical place. That's all I can say about it. It's a magical place. It seems like it, the energy is contagious and just your love and excitement for the game and what you're doing and entertaining those fans. Uh, let me tell you, I'm impressed by it. I think we all just wanted to get you on the show just to talk to you about it. Let's talk about the rules for a second. For those who may not know, the Savannah Bananas and the party animals play by their own rules. What are some of the more unique ones, including maybe like foul ball and the walk? Like what's going on? Yeah, so I think the, the major rule that we really hone in on um, because we have to practice this a lot to get it perfect is the walk. There's no walk in Banana Land. When you get 
four balls, you sprint. You are sprinting as fast as you can. You're trying to make it to second base. And uh, as you can see right here, it's basically just a crazy, chaotic, uh, every, every player has to touch the ball, but we kind of made it into an art form where it's like we know exactly who's getting it at which time, we know where we're supposed to be. Awesome. And uh, yeah, as you can see, yeah. Wait, why was he getting carried Breland, off the field? Why was Breland that? getting carried off right there, that's pretty funny. He was out, right? Is that what happens? You have to you leave what? in shame? If you're out, do yeah. you have to get carried off the field in shame? So, there's another there's another video of me getting thrown out and I got thrown out at second base and it was a bang bang play I, I thought I was safe but clearly I wasn't and they all like I was running off the field and Dalton uh, their catcher I think it was their catcher yeah brought brought me back and like pulled me in and they all took a selfie they all took a selfie with me at second base and I'm just like at that point that's when I realized like this is not a game where you're worried about stats and you're worried about who's winning it's a show and you're putting on a show so when you get thrown out you're still part of the show so if you show any bad body language like people will remember that and it's you don't you don't want to do that so oh man wow. speaking of the show uh, we talked about Jonathan Papelbon yesterday pitching <laughs> in, in the kilt um, you've also played with uh, Josh Reddick has been on the team as well what's it been like to you know, be around these guys that have been in the show, these major leaguers, and just be a part of, you know, a different type of team atmosphere. I think the coolest part of all of that is you see these major league guys coming in, Bill Lee, Jonathan Papelbon, Josh Reddick, and you're like, you're, you're expecting them to kind of, like, show that they're a major league baseball player and act like it. They come to Banana Land, and they become a kid again. They, As you can oh, see, Jonathan Papelbon was a kid for the whole entire time like since the moment that we shook hands it was like he was ready to be a banana and i feel like it was a like it's a calling for a lot of these guys that um i forget i think it was johnny gomes was like yeah i have a four-year-old daughter and i think it was johnny gomes don't mark my words on that but it was a major leaguer and he's like i have a four-year-old daughter so i need to be cool for her and i need Aww. to play for the bananas to make sure that i'm like still in the scene <laughs> i mean this has eric burns written all over it it's, it's so perfect for him <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. This is all so cool. Uh, before you were with the Bananas, you went on what you called the MLB World Tour. Can you share any experiences? Like, what was your favorite part from that? I would say just being able to travel and um, working with Game Time was awesome. Game Time's a ticket app that I worked with to go on this tour. And um, I think just seeing, like, other than the baseball side, because obviously the baseball side's amazing, and that's all I talk about on social media. But the other side of it is, like, being able to see all of these new places that I'd never seen before and new cities and uh, different food. Obviously, I'm a foodie, so I love trying all the different foods. Um, but, yeah, I think I can't even pinpoint a specific moment that was amazing because um, it really all was. And, yeah, being able to see all those cities is really cool. I've got to stick with the food. Love food. <laughs> I need to know what your favorite food is from the stadiums you traveled to and the craziest food that you had. So the best food and the craziest food is the same food. What? Uh, it's that one right there. It's the Kauffman Stadium Reese's Pulled Pork Sandwich. Um, I went into Kauffman Stadium and I'm like, there's no way I'm trying that. I'm going to I'm going to get sick afterwards i took one bite and i'm like peanut butter and brisket are supposed to be together Stop. like both for they're real? supposed to be together for real <laughs> i'm not even kidding um like it was it was incredible and then honestly the white the the clip that just showed up the white socks um it was fries and like and buffalo wings in the same like all molded into one that was really good too how'd you feel after <laughs> good question not great. i never feel good after anyway, but you got to do it for the content. You got to do it for the content. It's all for the content. You're taking one for the team, Jackson. Real quick, before we let you go, in your dream scenario, what viral moment would you want to create with the bananas? You can incorporate any any former player, any celebrity, any prop, anything you want. I'm putting them on the spot, you right? Cook it up. Think, all right, all right. I think one of the coolest things, and this is actually a, a new rule where the first pitch of every game, so someone comes in and throws the first pitch, whether it's a 12-year-old kid, a uh, 50-year-old man, like whoever throws the first pitch, it counts. So that <gasps> counts. It, it's either a ball or a strike. Love. So I think having like someone like Matthew McConaughey or some, some big movie star coming in and throwing a strike for that first pitch, that would be the coolest thing ever. I think that would be awesome. Well, Matthew McConaughey, if you're watching, uh, we're going to need to list you to the Savannah Bananas to go. We might as, well do, a, might as well do a celebrity closer, too. Might Ooh, as well have a... See, I love oh, that. I like what about that. a celebrity pinch hitter? 
What about what about Xavier Scruggs? Hey, what about Xavier? Ah. <laughs> Set it up. Hey, talking I got TikTok got little, stars. I still got a little bit left. Calissa, hey Jackson, now you talking my language, my man. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Here we go. We got. We, we'll get you there. Okay, and we'll have your people talk to his people. We're gonna make this thing happen. Listen, Jackson, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Congratulations on all of your success. Yeah, uh, we're rooting it. for you, man. Keep killing thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you guys.